Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of ChartYourTrade.com's free webinar series. I am your host, Michael Lamott. I am the founder of ChartYourTrade.com and today we'll be discussing an introduction to risk management and position sizing, part two. With us again is keynote speaker, Adam Sarhan. Adam is the founder and CEO of Sarhan Capital, which is parent to FindLadyStocks.com. Without further ado, here's Adam. So let's talk about a drawdown, the concept of a drawdown for a second. Drawdown is a period of time where your portfolio loses value. That's the simplest definition. What happens, let's say you have a $100,000 account, you're down 5%, your account's now at 95000 You don't get to a new, you're out of your drawdown until your portfolio is over 100, your starting point in that example. Now, if, let's say your, your portfolio appreciates, you're at 120, and then you, you pull back to 115 or 110 or even 100, doesn't really matter. The high watermark is what they call it in the, in the business. That high level of 120 is now your drawdown, and you don't get paid. Incentive fees if you're managing money and, and getting paid incentive fees typically until you're above the 120 mark. And keep in mind that as individual investors, you don't have that that detailed in your own thought process, and it's not separated that that that, that much or that in depth. But it's really important to keep in mind that there's a lot of a, a lot that happens not just to your physical capital but to your mental capital as well when you're in a drawdown. And I view capital. I mean, it's not something that I've come up with, but I use the whole definition of there's two types of capital. There's physical, which is your money, and then there's mental, which is your mental state of mind. So the mental capital to me is more important than your physical. Obviously, if you lose your physical, th there's a very strong correlation between your physical and mental, but once you're able to separate, and this is a very, 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 very difficult thing to do, the, f the physical capital from your mental capital, you get to a point where don't take it personally. You know, losses happen. It's inevitable. You have a plan. You trade your plan. You're, it's not. Don't take it. It's very, very difficult. It's easy to say. It's very difficult to do. But understand, the deeper that drawdown, typically, the more mental capital you lose alongside with the physical capital. And there's negative psychological aspects that happen. You start getting to a downward spiral. All of a sudden, you think, you know, weakness begets weakness in stocks. Okay, also in your psyche. The more um, I'm going to take a loss. I'm going. I don't want to take a loss. I don't want to take a loss. I don't want to take a loss. That becomes your internal dialogue. Well, guess what happens? You're going to take more losses, and that's where that whole psychological element comes into play. It's really, really important to keep in mind what type of drawdown you're in, what type of drawdown you're comfortable with, and then equally important, what type of historical drawdown does your system allow for? You know, Can you recover from a 20% drawdown, a 30%, 40 50 or not? Some systems do. Some systems don't, and some people can't emotionally or psychologically handle those type of drawdowns. Some can. So that's why it's really important to keep in mind your comfort level. And again, you're free to determine what that level is. Some big shops, they say, okay, if you're a portfolio manager at big firm XYZ, you're down 5%, you're going to take off for two weeks and just clear your head. You're down 10%, you're down 20%. Everyone's got different parameter, internal parameters that they set. But there's a certain level where, okay, if I hit this mark, I'm done. Not done, you know, fire, just taking a break, a mental break. And again, you need to rest. Just like at the end of the night, we go to sleep. Same thing. You need a break. You need to rest because without that rest, you'll burn out. And it's so easy in this 24-7 world of markets around the clock and blah, blah, futures trading all the time. Blah, blah. It's very, very, very easy to just be on all the time. But it's important to just step back and take a break when needed. Larry Hyde, the famous market wizard, has a great line. He goes, if you don't bet, you can't win. If you lose all your chips, you can't bet. It's really powerful. Now, by betting, he's just using gambling as an analogy, but really with investing and trading, again, just to clarify my point of view, it's not a gamble. It's investing and trading and speculating is a business, and you can make a theoretic case here that anything is a gamble. If I cross the street, I get hit by a bus. So am I gambling that I'm going to not get hit by a bus if I cross the street? Possibly, but that's all. That's life. So in this business, he's saying if you don't place the trade, you not you can't win, period. If you place the trade and you lose your portfolio, you lose your account value, guess what? You can't place another trade. So one of the really, really, really important lessons that I've learned over the years is that you've got to find out what matter, what parameters you're comfortable with, and you've got to define them for yourself and then operate within those, portfolio, those parameters. How much of a drawdown are you comfortable with? How much of a of a um, portfolio heat do you want to take? How much risk do you want to take when you buy 
when you're going to get out, when you lose, that type of thing. Now, how often do you want to trade is another parameter that needs to be factored into the equation. Some people like to trade a lot. Some people don't. They like to buy and then just forget about type of a thing and, and, and revisit down the road or revisit once a quarter. And still both strategies work. It's just a matter of finding something that works for you. Remember, undercapitalized accounts typically fail. One of the biggest problems, somebody's got 100 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever it is and say, okay, I'm going to go out there and trade like a cowboy. Boom, they're done. Not to say that you can't start with a small amount of money. I did. Start with almost nothing. Actually start, started with nothing at one point and built it up thankfully and, and look at millions of other people around me that are more successful that have done the same thing and much more uh, – you know, larger swings up and down. You have history – you know, people – one of the market wizards had turned eighty thousand dollars into eighty million, or something crazy like that. You know, Jesse Livermore, same exact thing. Created fortunes, bankrupt, fortunes, bankrupt. So, it's not that you can't trade with small amounts of money, but understand the difference between a small amount of money and being undercapitalized. So, no matter, irrespective of the size of your account, trade within that so you're properly capitalized. Don't take on too much risk. That's the point of this whole undercapitalized account concept. Uh, typically, here's some good few points for you to keep in mind as you go through the process. How you think is everything. That's really, really important. And winners, I've noticed and I've learned, and I've, it's, it's a conscious, conscious decision. Think positively, but more importantly, think like winners. And that whole weakness begets weakness in the market, but also in your psyche, strength begets strength in your psyche as well, also in the market. So if you think like a winner, okay, guess what? You're going to attract more winners. Not, I'm not sitting here telling you the secret. And you sit on your couch and visualize winners and massive fortunes, and all of a sudden it's going to click. No, there's a lot of hard work and and a tremendous amount of effort that needs to be put in, and, and perseverance and tenacity. Dot dot dot. But it's one of those concepts where it's like, all right, be very take inventory of your thoughts. It's very 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 important. Read the book by Napoleon Hill. Uh, thinking grow rich. Read Dale Carnegie's work. A lot of these things, the power of now, the, a lot of these things about s how to get your psychological thought process, your internal dialogue, from a negative to a positive. You know, don't look at things that how uh, worse than they are. Look at things that how they are great. Look at things better than they are internally, and then all of a sudden, over time and with hard work, things tend to work out well. So here's how winners think and they, how they handle risk. So winners, they cut their losses. They don't let their losers run. Losers, they don't. They let their, they just sit there and hope that the stocks don't go back up. When a trade goes against a winner, they sell it. They take a small loss, and they're, it's, they're okay with that. The loser hopes and holds on. Now, by the word loser, I don't mean that in a demeaning or condescending sense. It's just the plain dollars and cents. The winner is the one who makes money. The loser does not. Uh, the connotations aside, winner winners act. They actually they're, they're based on reality. The facts change. They change. Losers operate in dream world, in fantasy world. They don't deal with actuality. They have their own internal reality, and it's disconnected from what's actually happening on Wall Street or in the real world. Uh, winners focus on trading right. Losers focus on making money. So, okay, what does that mean? So the doctor is performing a, a, a surgery on you. Is he sitting there looking at, okay, I'm making this amount of money while I'm doing the surgery, or is he doing the process of paying attention to what he's doing and being in the now type of a thing, whereas – the, tr the winning trader over time and investor over time looks at the process, the inputs, and then the output will hopefully take care of itself. But once you focus on how much money I'm making right now and dismiss all the other factors, in other words, I'm going to sell the stock because I made this amount of money or I'm losing this amount of money, but the stock's still acting perfectly fine. That's where that's what I'm talking. That's when you lose eye on the fo on the ball and you lose focus because you're just counting the dollars and cents or pennies and that's where the emotions come in and that just kills your rational thought. Remember, trends reverse because most – in general, most losing people think alike. So they trends go up and they go down, but also periods of, of strength within your portfolio and periods of weakness ebb and flow. You don't stay in a drawdown forever. Most people – I mean successful people don't stay in drawdowns forever. And they don't stay in massive win streaks forever either. So when you're in a drawdown, another way of wording that is to use another gambling term is being on tilt. And when you're in a drawdown or on tilt or things just aren't working for whatever reason, it's not just in markets but also in life, just realize, step back and let some time pass and then revisit. There's no – the market's going to be here tomorrow. It's going to be here next week, next year, next month, next 10 years. The question is are you? Not just are you going to have enough money to be there, but are you going to want – your mental capital is it going to be there? Is the interest going to be there? Your attention. You know, Remember, attention is a currency of your brain. How you use it, or how you invest your current your your attention, is it's your scarce resource. It matters. 
and then finally winners have a trade uh, have a plan and they trade their plan losers just act on emotion blindly out of just hey this is a hunch it feels good dot 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 so there's incomplete logic you know uh, like we discussed earlier I'm gonna buy this at 100 I'm gonna sell it at 90 then what how much of my overall portfolio am I gonna lose and that's when I reverse engineered thing and said okay all that matters to me is my bottom line so here's my entry here's my exit what am I gonna lose if I'm wrong and that's really, really important. And that's where these three questions that we discussed earlier come back into play. So now with all this explanation behind us, let's make sense out of this. Number one, when to enter. Okay, you've got the advanced entry point, which is a separate webinar. We've got a few webinars on that and a lot of content as well. Feel free to email us afterwards with any questions if we don't have time in the Q&A today uh, by visiting any of the websites and the contact page. When to exit is also really important. You know, you can lock in a winner or you can lock in a loser and protect your loss. Keep it small. Typically stops are resting and they're only tightened. They're never widened as far as I'm concerned. So what does that mean? You can, your game plan's at 100. I'm going to buy. I'm going to sell it at 90. Okay. For whatever reason, stock's not acting well. It's at 95. I'm not comfortable. I'm going to tighten that stop and exit at 95. Now conversely, that's tightening a stop. Widening a stop is saying, oh, I'm not going to sell it at 90 even though that was my plan. I'm now going to sell it if it goes to 80. And then if it goes to 70, and then that's, you know, the thought, the thought. So that's why from when to exit is really important as well. And then when you do exit for a profit, there's two types of profits that you can take. Sorry, there's two types of exits. Based on a P&L, I, listen, I want to lock in a 20% gain in the stock or 30% or 50 or whatever the number is that you've determined, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that as long as it's conducive to your overall plan. And or B, I, want, I don't want to lose this much. So in other words, sorry, I want to lock in a gain of at least this much. And that's where, where it's like, okay, I want to have, I have a 20% gain now. I'll give it some room. I want to get out at 15 or 10%. And that's the second way of taking a gain. Then the third way of exiting at the profit is saying, okay, technically it's breaking down. The market's not acting well. The stock's not acting well. If it hits this level, I'm out, and I'm still profitable. So those are the, really the, the, there's two, but really give it a third, the third dynamic there as well. But most importantly, for the sake of this webinar and for the, the concept here, defense first, how much of your portfolio are you going to lose if you're wrong? That's the question that's really, really important. Remember, risk, there's reward. Yin, there's yang. You know, white, there's black. That's just how – it's one of the laws of nature. So you know, every action is equal and opposite reaction. Same thing with risk and reward. So when you have a low risk, you're probably going to have a low return. You take too high of a risk, you possibly could have a high return, but you could also – have a low return if it, if if the risk goes against you. So in other words, it's not even a return. You'll just have bad you'll have bad returns is the way they word it. But really, you have negative returns where you'll be down because you're taking too high of risk. And what happens? You take a few losses and and you're going to get wiped out if not lose your whole entire stake. Every single dynamic, every decision that you take should be a comp uh, some type of of internal question between hey here's my risk, what's my potential reward. Otherwise, if the risk-reward ratio is skewed not in your favor against you, don't take the trade. It's that simple. There's no gun to your head. There's no rule that says you have to buy it. There's no rule that says you have to sell it. That's the beauty of this business. You're free to do whatever you want, and you set your own rules that make you comfortable and that work for you, and that's really, really important. Always look at the other side of the coin also. Here's my risk. What's my reward? And then realize that the, that's where the, the dynamic comes into play. There's an optimal level of risk. If it's too much risk, it's not going to be good because you have too big of a loss if you're wrong. If you're too low of a risk, you know I'm only going to risk a tenth of a percent, or I'm only going to risk really, really insignificant amount of my money, and risk one or two units, and that's it. Well, okay. What if you're stopped out? You're going to lose a quarter of a percent or half of a percent of your portfolio. That's fine. But really, what if when you're when things work, what happens? To your portfolio, if you only make a percent over the course of the year, is that really optimal level of reward? Anybody that guarantees you returns in this business is lying and belongs in jail with Madoff because it's just impossible to guarantee returns. Understand that ev inherent in every potential investment or trade or speculation or whatever, there's always risk involved. So just like on the other side of risk is a return, on the other side of return, there's risk. Pick a level that you're comfortable with. And then you move forward that way. <clears throat> Bruce Kovner, another market wizard, great line. Risk management is the most important thing to be well understood. Under trade, under trade, under trade is my second piece of advice. Whatever you think your position ought to be, cut it at least in half. 
excuse me, what does he mean? Typically, he means respect risk. And if you think, you know, don't be a cowboy. You want to be a cowboy? Go to a rodeo. Don't go to Wall Street. It's really, really important for you to define yourself as a trader or as an investor. Are you a fear-based trader? Are you scared to place trades and never, you know, win big because you're too scared, and then you're attracting more losses? Are you an aggressive trader? Lots of traders, by definition, are Type A aggressive people. It just happens, you know. Whatever you want to call them, good, bad, I'm not here to judge. It's just a matter of, okay, what type of trader are you? And then realize that there's an optimal level. You have a predetermined position side. You have a set of rules that work for you. They don't cause you too much portfolio heat. You sleep well at night. You divorce your, your quote-unquote emotional well-being from your performance because you are not your performance irrespective of whether you're performing well or not. Of course, most people are happy when they're performing well and sad when they're not. I get that. I'm not here to tell you you know, be a robot, but understand that the, that emotion, uh, that emotional roller coaster of being up and down is detrimental to your overall performance unless if you have rules in place to remove the emotional element from the decision-making process. And then always keep in mind there's a certain level of portfolio heat that you're comfortable with and keep that in mind as you, as you make your decisions. When do you sell? There's three reasons to sell. You either take a loss, you break even, or you lock in a gain. Period. Again, keep things simple. There's no if there is, please t you know feel free to reach out. There's no other reason that you possibly want to take a loss. Now you could be fearful that the market go down, this and other thing, but either way, bottom line, the way it affects your portfolio, it's one of those three scenarios. So, do you have conviction in the idea? It's important to understand. Do you, how, what's your level of conviction? You know, where is the stock? Is it early in the move? Is it late in the move? Did you enter right? Or you buy a breakout and, and chase it, and now it's really extended, and it's going to pull back on you. Do you want to lock in a profit, or do you want to potentially sit for a larger move? You know, what's your time frame? You want to be an active trader, or do you want to be inactive, or somewhere in between? Portfolio management. We think we have a few minutes here, but we're quickly running out of time, so I'll, I'll go through this concept rather quickly. Uh, portfolio management simply means you want to understand that there's different types, in addition to risk management, you want to manage your portfolio. And there's different objectives. You know, Mary might have different objectives than Joe. Joe might have different objectives when he's 20 versus when he's 80 and everything in between. The, the way you create, select, and, but once you determine your objectives, excuse me, you want to select investments that illustrate, best illustrate those objectives. So they bring them to life. Your portfolio, your position sizing. You know what strategy do you prefer? Do you want to be one percent units, or do you want to be two percent, half a percent? How many units are you comfortable with? Three units, five units, ten units, twenty units, two units, one unit. As far as position sizing, you know portfolio heat. What's your level? Are you active manager or are you a passive manager? Which strategy works best for you? And then pyramiding. You know typically we recommend averaging up, not averaging down. That's not to say if you average down you're going to fail. I know people that are very successful averaging down. I also know more people that are unsuccessful and it kills them because they they make emotional decisions and they're quote unquote committed to that quote unquote bad idea that's just not working at that moment in time. Now it could turn out work in their favor, but typically the market's telling you if your first buy is not profitable, the timing of that buy is not ideal. So to put more good money out of your pocket into that bad idea or that money losing idea isn't something that I recommend because it's much better to force feed the winners than feed the losers. Trading frequency, are you over trading or are you under trading? It's very easy to over trade. Oh no, I'm down 5%, I need to get back to even. And then I'm down 7, I need to get back. I need that, that need that just, you create it, it's a figment of your imagination. But it's normal, it happens to everybody. You've got to be able to just have, that's why rules are so important. And those rats, remove the emotions, have a set of rules that are, allow you to make rational, unbiased, emotional, uh, sorry, decisions without emotions coming into play. And then diversified, how well diversified are you? And and or what's the risk between being too diversified and then over diversified. That Thank you all for watching and we hope that you enjoyed this video. If you are watching us on YouTube, please take a moment and click the like button here at the bottom and also take a moment to subscribe to us here on YouTube. If you'd like to try out Adam Sarhan's Fine Leading Stock service and see all of these concepts in action, visit FineLeadingStocks.com and save 10% off of any membership level when you sign up. Simply go to FindLeadingStocks.com, enter discount code CYT, 
and claim your 10% discount. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.